Hey, it's Tommy from the Run Testers, and this is our first run review of the Nike Infinity Run 4 Gore Tex. Now, this shoe was sent to me by the guys over at Sport Shoes. I'm not paid to review this shoe, so I can say whatever I want. But a big thanks to the guys at Sport Shoes for sending this over so I can do this and the full review. Uh, if you head into the caption below, you can also find a link um, to the shoe to find out more about it if you so wish. Right, let's dive in and do the first run review. The Nike Infinity Run 4 Gore-Tex costs £174.95 or $180, weighs in at 382 grams or 13.5 ounces for men in a size 8 and the drop is 8 millimeters. The Infinity Run 4 Gore-Tex takes the latest model of the Infinity and adds a new upper to help protect the feet from moisture. Like the original Infinity 4, it has the same new React X midsole foam to provide additional bounce, which also lowers the carbon footprint of the material by at least 43%. The shoe also features the same wide toe box for increased comfort, as well as additional stability. There's a curved outsole design to promote a rocker experience when running, as well as a storm tread outsole to provide a high level of grip and extra protection for the midsole. There's plenty of cushioning around the ankle collar for a nice level of stepping comfort, pull tabs on both the heel and the tongue, and a reinforced water repellent layer in the toe box. So the fit for me in the Infinity Run for Gore-Tex, it is a very comfortable shoe. It's a very roomy shoe. The forefoot is extremely wide. I've got fairly average sized feet, so um, I didn't have any issues with it at all. But if you did have not quite narrow feet, you right, might really notice that space in the forefoot. There's a lot of extra space at the side of the foot for me uh, and just before the toe as well is quite roomy. So if you do have narrow feet, you might notice that. I'm a size eight in the UK. This shoe is a size eight in the UK and a size nine in the US. I would stick to my UK size eight in this shoe. I found it very comfortable. And even though there was extra space at the front, I didn't have any issue with the shoe at all. So I never got a chance to test the original Nike Infinity Run 4. We do have a first run review and a full review up on the channel if you want to check that out. Uh, the biggest difference or the only difference with this shoe is that it has a new Gore-Tex upper on it, which is designed to protect the feet from rain um, and other sources of water and moisture. Um, and that's it really. It's really just a shoe designed for the winter conditions uh, if you're out there running in the rain quite a lot. Um, the biggest thing that I've noticed about it is that the weight has gone up. It was already a significant increase on the uh, Infinity Run 3. For me, it comes in at 382 grams in a size eight UK, which is a very, very heavy shoe. Uh, I was quite surprised when I took it out of the of, of the box because straight away you can really feel that weight on it, um, which did make me a little bit concerned at the start. I'm not particularly a big fan of heavy shoes, um, and uh, yeah, I I wasn't sure how it was going to run um, out on the road. So today I what I aim to do with this shoe is try and find some ground that was a little bit wetter. Um, it's pretty dry and bright at the moment, so it's quite hard to test Gore-Tex uh, upper. Uh, so I went at uh, out on a load of paths on the downs, on the South Downs, and I did a 10K today. So that was probably about 5K on public footpaths, um, gravel paths, those sorts of things, and then 5K on the road as well. Um, and what I found about the shoe is that it doesn't feel as heavy when you're running in it as it feels in my hand right now. It does feel very heavy in my hand. Um, I actually found it to be quite a comfortable shoe to wear. Um, I didn't really feel like it was too clunky on the feet. I only did 10k on it. Uh, I probably wouldn't want to do long distances in this just because I think that weight's really going to become noticeable when you're doing more miles in it. Um, but for that 10k, felt absolutely fine. Um, I definitely didn't feel like uh, I, I was ha I had a really heavy shoe on my feet. I think that's partly due to the rocker design in it. It does sort of pop you forward a little bit. Not massively. It's by no means a versatile shoe. It's not going to be something that you can use for running fast in. Um, but it does have a little bit of a rocker in it. So it did feel like there was a little bit of smoothness in the transition. And it did feel like it was pushing me forward a little bit, but not massively. Um, I definitely wouldn't say it's a shoe that you do any anything other than easy runs in. So the run I did today was at about five minute 20 kilometers, which is sort of my standard pace for um, ticking along nicely and comfortably. Um, and it was absolutely fine for that. I think that's probably the sweet spot for this shoe. I did try and pick up the pace for a couple of the kilometers. 
didn't feel like it, 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 I had any sort of versatility to do that. It was definitely too heavy for it. Um, and I didn't feel like uh, it was designed for running faster at all. It just feels like a bit of a workhorse tank, um, which feels like it's going to last a while. Um, it really feels nice and stable on the feet. That It's a wide shoe. There's a wide toe box, but there's also a wide platform on the bottom. So it does really feel like your foot is firmly held in place. The... Uh, Infinity 3, uh, I tested this over, well over a year ago. Um, I wasn't a massive fan of this shoe when it came to training runs, daily training miles, stuff like that. Um, but it equally, it does feel quite sturdy and, and stable. So it's quite a good, solid shoe uh, if that's what you're looking for. And it's, both of them are probably good shoes if you are probably a heavier runner that wants something that's really um, holds your foot in place and gives you a lot, a nice big base on it. Um, the Infinity Run 3, I've actually, I basically use it for the gym now. I don't really use it for running just because it's, it doesn't really offer a lot um, that my other shoes won't do. It just feels very sturdy. It's almost, almost has some of the benefits of a stability shoe without really being a stability shoe. But um, it, the difference between the Infinity Run 3, well, there's a lot of differences to be honest. It looks like a completely different shoe. Um, but the midsole foam in the uh, Infinity Run 4 is a little bit softer. Not massively. I didn't really feel like uh, my feet were sinking into the ground or anything. I definitely noticed it's a little bit softer than the Infinity Run 3, though. Um, the only thing I would say about that uh, new React X midsole, midsole foam is that it doesn't really have much in terms of bounce or anything like that. It does feel like it feels comfortable. It feels like your foot's nicely hitting the ground. It's quite a dense foam, so it doesn't feel like it's squishing. It just feels like it's, it's a little bit of giving it. Um, which does feel quite nice when you're out on the roads, um, but you don't get anything back from it. It doesn't feel like there's any bounce. There's definitely no responsiveness in it. Um, so it's definitely not a shoe that you would use for running faster in. There's no real performance benefits to this shoe. It just feels like a workhorse that's gonna keep going for a long time and just get, keeps your foot securely in place um, with peace of mind and a nice bit of stability. Uh, the outsole is very good. So it was, um, I was running on some inclines and declines on various terrain today um like gravel and um um some muddy paths things like that felt absolutely fine there's quite a big update to the outsole that you get on the uh three uh felt great so i uh, the reason why i took it out today on the downs is because I, I did when you've got a gore-tex shoe you're probably going to be using it in conditions where you need to have waterproofing um so i wanted to just see what it was like on some lighter trails and it was absolutely fine that outsole isn't particularly luggy there's not like massive lugs on it but it does it just feel pretty sturdy i didn't feel like i was slipping over anything at any point on that run um would have been nice if it was wet conditions today because i could have probably tested that out but um no absolutely fantastic outsole for me just feels great uh, and it looks really solid and durable as well the upper which is that new gore-tex upper uh, it feels very comfortable there's a lot of padding inside which it which feels really nice uh, as i say it wasn't raining today so i couldn't really test it out in the rain but i did pour some water on it uh, when i was running and it was absolutely fine nothing went through uh, it does have these sort of weird little pockets at the front of it uh, near the laces nothing came through there at all um so i think it's it's probably a solid shoe when it comes to being waterproof what i would say is that when it comes to running shoes that are waterproof if you are out running in in the, in the rain, um, the, if the water gets into the top of the shoe, your feet are gonna get wet anyway. And that always happens with me because I only ever run in shorts. Um, so I'd probably say it's good for light rain and stuff like that, but if it's really pelting it down, you're gonna get wet in your feet anyway. So um, you take that into consideration when you're looking at buying them because, uh, or, or if you run in leggings or waterproof trousers or anything like that. Um, but I always find my feet get wet when I'm in lots of rain anyway. So my early verdict for the Nike Infinity Run 4 Gore-Tex is that it's a comfortable shoe. It's a surprisingly um, enjoyable shoe to wear despite the really heavy weight. It's one of the heaviest shoes I've tested for ever, I think. I don't think, I very rarely get a shoe that weighs as much as this. If I do, it tends to be like sort of some sort of heavy duty trail shoe, uh, definitely not a road shoe. So it's surprisingly heavy weighted shoe, um, but it doesn't feel too bad um, even despite that. So um, I'd say that for me, it's not a versatile shoe. It's definitely a tank workhorse shoe you, for ticking off easy miles. Uh, it's got a lot of stability. It's very comfortable. Um, it just feels very supportive. 
So if you're the sort of runner that just wants a real power house to just tick off the easy miles, it might work for you. It it, it doesn't feel bad at, at maintaining a consistent pace. It feels quite comfortable. Um, definitely not. D definitely didn't really notice it um, being really heavy out on the run, but I probably wouldn't do long distance in this. Uh, and I definitely wouldn't try and run at a faster, faster pace in this just because it, it just won't do it. It's not It's not going to do it. Um, it's a tricky shoe to, to classify because it's quite expensive. It's like £175 in the UK. Um, other cushion shoes out there do cushioning a lot better so some cushion shoes have a lot of bounce in them some of them are really soft um this sort of doesn't deliver any of those things it's just a very stable shoe it's almost a stability shoe without having stability elements in it um which might be good for some people i'd probably say that because the midsole is quite dense um and doesn't really do a lot that might be partly because I'm relatively light. I'm not, I'm about 70 kilograms. Maybe if you're a heavier runner, you might really get more benefits out of that React X midsole foam. Um, but for me, it's just a bit of a chunky, heavy shoe um, and not one that I would probably use that much. It's not really a shoe that would fit into my rotation. It's not a bad shoe. I've just got way better cushion shoes that work for my style of running that are either lighter or just have some other performance benefits. Uh, I don't really need the level of support and stability that feels like this shoe is giving. I also don't particularly need waterproof shoes. Uh, I've never really worried about that. Um, and I don't think I've ever thought I wish my shoes were waterproof, even if it's raining. Um, but if that's something you really want, I'd probably say if you were running through like grass or something like that, uh, this might be a good shoe because it will protect you from that dewy grass uh, in the wet. Um, but as I say, if it starts raining a lot, it's going to come through that ankle collar anyway, unless you've got waterproof socks on and they're going to make your feet sweat quite a lot. That's it from me on this first run of the Nike Infinity Run 4. Gore-Tex, thanks a lot for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, click that little bell and check the channel out for all the other videos we've got. Go to the caption below. You can also find a link to the most recent podcast that comes out at the end of each month. And you can find a link to this shoe from the guys over at Sports Shoes. So have a click on that if you want to find out more about the shoe. Thanks a lot for watching. Catch you next time.